By now, you have probably heard that it takes you hours to charge an electric vehicle. But what if I told you it only takes 30 seconds to charge? Let me elaborate. It takes your vehicle several hours to charge, not you. And vehicles spend at least 20 hours a day parked somewhere. And a vehicle at rest is a charging opportunity. Hello, my name is Mohammed Akhlaghi. I was recognized as one of the top 30 under 30 in business in 2018, and I'm currently the CEO of Plugzio, which happens to be my third startup. It's an absolute pleasure to do the talk for you today. Every electric vehicle gets delivered with a free charger, just like a laptop. When you buy it, it comes with its own adapter that you can plug into a regular outlet. Now, chargers are commoditized now. You can buy a decent charging cable from Amazon for about 200 bucks. And multiple studies have shown that this rather slow charger is more than enough to satisfy the daily needs of 94% of drivers. Basically everyone, unless you're an Uber driver or a commercial driver. The main reason for this is that electric vehicles only have to recharge what they have used during the day not the entire battery as falsely advertised everywhere. But there's a problem. If someone takes their charger and plugs it into an outlet in a shared parking lot, like an apartment complex or a hotel, the cost of electricity goes to the property, not the driver. And properties are denying people access to power simply because they're bleeding money. We even see other residents who unplug chargers in apartments because they're like, you're not paying for my gas. Why should I pay for your electricity? Now, Plugzio is the simplest solution to this problem. Plugzio is a consumption monitored outlet that bills the user directly. So it's, it's it essentially works like a vending machine for power. There is no power flowing through the device unless you scan the QR code and pay for it. We take the money from the user, we pay back the property. Problem solved. But this talk is not about Plugzio. I want to take this time to clear up some misconceptions, major ones, about level one charging, or in other words, charging using a regular outlet. The number one question I get is this. What if I wanted to go far one day? Is level one going to be enough? This is probably the oldest sales trick in the books. Scare tactics. So the salesperson says, what if you wanted to take your kids out the next day and you didn't have enough charge? You, oh, you need a fast charger. The reality is this. The size of your battery determines your range, not the speed of your charger. If your phone runs out of, out of battery in the middle of the day, you don't run out and buy a faster home charger you buy a battery pack. If you want to go far with your electric vehicle, buy one that has a large battery pack because you can go as far as your battery allows, not your charger. Second question. In future, the technology will allow us to have bigger batteries. Therefore, we need faster chargers. Absolutely not. It's the exact opposite. Remember, you only have to recharge what you have used during the day, not the entire battery. And in fact, if you have a bigger battery, that means you have a bigger buffer. So even if one day you go 70 miles instead of the average 30 miles, you still have 200 miles of range in your battery. So bigger batteries are actually better with slow charging. Here's another question. What if we install some relatively fast chargers and have people share them? Now, this may be a short term solution when there is like a few EV owners in the property, but it's a major source of inconvenience and conflicts in the long term. Shared charging is exactly like shared laundry rooms, which we still have in some low end properties. Let's not move back in time. Ask yourself, would you rather live in a property that has a private, maybe less powerful washing machine, or one that has a powerful unit that is shared between 50 other people. Sharing is not caring when it comes to electric vehicle charging. No one wants to come down in their pajamas to move their vehicle so somebody else can plug in. Another question. What if we invest in a load balance private high power charging solution? 
Technical jargons like load balancing, demand response, load sharing essentially mean that your property does not have enough power available. So instead of solving a complexity by adding more complexity, the logical solution would be to install a low power charger that doesn't consume too much power in the first place. Instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars so chargers can share power between themselves. You know, in Napoleon times, back when the cost of a horse was equivalent to a Lexus today, if someone knocked on your door and said, we have this amazing technology that would make your horse eat faster than the other horses, you would laugh at them. You would say, my horse is here all night. Why do I need to feed it faster? Remember, your car keys travel more than your car does. With the amount of time a vehicle is parked overnight, an outlet is more than enough. There is no need for an over-engineered, costly solution to manage power. Now, AES Engineering did a study on the average 20-year life cycle cost of different configurations of EV charges. They estimated that each level 2 configuration is going to cost around $10,000 per unit in maintenance and service fees. In comparison, this is the cost of a level 1 solution. I rest my case here. Last point here before I give you my two key takeaways. Electric mobility is not just about electric vehicles. The, the market for electric micromobility, like electric scooters, e-bikes, is growing much faster than electric vehicles without any government support. So planning infrastructure that only serves electric vehicles is a short-sighted strategy. An outlet is multi-purpose. You can charge an electric vehicle with it, an electric scooter, an electric bicycle. We even have clients who vacuum clean their cars in addition to charging them. Everyone benefits from having an outlet at their parking space, whether you own an electric vehicle or not. That's how infrastructure should be. Spending money on a solution that serves everyone, not just a subset of the market. Now, at the end of my presentation, I want to leave you with two key takeaways. Here's number one. Focusing on public charging infrastructure is fighting the last war. The major advantage of electric vehicles is they can be charged anywhere, not just at gas stations. Electric vehicles are essentially cell phones on wheels, and nobody buys a phone if they have to charge it at a supermarket across the street. In fact, data shows that only 5% of public chargers are being used. So let's stop wasting money on public chargers and leave that to car manufacturers and corporations. If they want to sell more cars, they need to invest in a supercharging network, just like what Tesla did. Let's solve the real problem for people, which is having a convenient, inexpensive way to charge at home or work where their vehicles spend majority of their time parked. Five years from today, the sheer number of EV-ready spaces a property has is going to be much more important than the power each unit delivers. Because if you have an outlet anywhere you park, your vehicle will always be fully charged. So takeaway number one is this. The focus needs to be on scalable and convenient charging not shared and fast charging. Takeaway number two, measuring charging time from zero to 100% is completely misleading and is far from the reality. It's the gas mentality to empty the tank, go to a gas station to fill it back up. Electric vehicle owners are like bumblebees. They go from charger to charger to charger, always topping up. So it's usually 80 to 100, 60 to 100, so why are we stating charging times from 0 to 100%? This is outright wrong, and it's hurting people's conception about electric vehicles. When a person reads somewhere that it takes 8 hours for an electric vehicle to charge, they subconsciously think that they have to wait in the car, just like they do with their gas vehicles, and immediately reject the idea. This is precisely why I started my presentation with a direct attack on this false mentality. It takes a human less than 30 seconds to charge an electric vehicle. They get out of the car, plug the charger in, they go home and sleep, 
that's it. The next day they come back to a fully charged vehicle. Now the proper question to ask in order to find the right type of a charger is this. How long is your vehicle parked at this parking space? If a vehicle is there for less than one hour, level three or supercharging is the best solution. Use case is on route charging near highways. You're on your way to your destination. You want to stop by for an hour to have some food. And while you're there, a level three charger will fully recharge your battery. Now, if the vehicle is parked for one to four hours at a parking space, best solution may be a level two charger. Use cases are transient parking spaces like gyms or visitor spaces. Remember, the question is not how long do you want them to stay? You don't want to enforce time limits on people because they're extremely inconvenient for the user and an overhead for management. The question is how long are they staying without any enforcement? Now, if a vehicle is parked for more than five hours at a parking space, level one is the ultimate solution. Use cases are home charging or workplace charging where vehicles are spend more than 20 hours a day parked. Remember, electric vehicle ownership is a lifestyle change. Data shows that more than 85% of charging happens either at home or at work, where vehicles spend majority of their time parked. This makes level one charging the most affordable, simple and scalable solution to support electric mobility. Every day we get bombarded with advertisement that makes us feel not enough. Electric vehicle charging is suffering the same tragedy, but we can change that. It's time to get pragmatic about EV charging. Join our mission and let's make charging simple. Thank you so much.